silent. Good to meet you, my Likewise, G. Likewise, man. It's a pleasure to be here. Man, bro. Shout out to my homeboy Muppet from my hood, man. He's been Muppet. telling <laughs> my homeboy. He's been telling you, telling me, <laughs> maybe telling you too in the yeah, DMs. Yeah. I'm not yeah, sure, yeah. bro. But uh, he's like, bro, you got to get silent on. You got to get silent on. And, you know, like we were talking beforehand, brother, um, sometimes you just wait for the, you know, wait for the universe to connect, so to speak, right? Exactly. That's how I like it. That's how I like it to happen. And, yeah, Muppet, shout out to Muppet, my boy. Uh, yeah, he did mention it once or twice real quick. And, um, yeah, I was like, yeah, cool, cool, you know. Uh, but like you said. Uh, oh, so, you know, he's reached out to you. Yeah, he he's he's he sent a message here or there, you know, and okay. and, and uh, just kind of mentioned it like, hey, my my homeboy's got the podcast, you know, let's make it happen, you know. And I was like, all right, all right, cool, you know, just yeah. You know, but like you said, I I, I kind of just wanted it to happen organically, you know, and then that's the way it went down. So yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I bumped. Well, let's talk about how it went down, dog. Yeah, I, yeah. I bumped into your nephew. Yeah. Right up the street of the liquor store. Exactly. Yep. Yep. And he jammed me up right away. Yeah. In a, but in a good way, though. Bro. Yeah. 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 He, goes, he, he goes, "What up, hoodstocks?" I said, "What's <laughs> happening, doggy?" And ba ba ba, whoa whoa whoop, and then bam. Next, you know it, I'm on a phone call. With little silent yeah. at the liquor store with a tall can in my hand, baby. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> hey, Hell hey, yeah. and that's what we call organically. Yeah. Organically. Is that what word? Organically? Or organically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's how <laughs> that's the definition of organically shit happens in the hood. Yeah. At exactly. the liquor store. Yeah, yeah. Tall can. It's a small world. And then I know that for a fact because it happens all the time. A lot of things that we have done, you know, as a group. And myself as a, you're just, you know, representing uh, what, what I do, the music, it's, it's happened that way. You know, it's organically, it's a small world. We run into folks or, uh, uh, you know, eventually, you know, like how you said, uh, off camera, um, you know, people mention the name, they say little silent, you know, he has a story to tell, you know, he's been around for a while, you know, bring him on. And, then, you know, obviously if you ain't never heard of me, you're going to be like, all right, little, you know, eventually, you know, It'll, it, it, it's gonna come to the table and you're gonna see what they're talking about, right? So I'm glad that uh, we're able to make it happen. I just wanna know one thing, bro. You still looking for that little blue minivan, bro? <laughs> <laughs> That one got sparked up a long time ago, like the song says. Like the song says. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that, that's that song right there, man. That's the one that, uh, that uh, to this day, youngsters, I'm talking about teenagers, to this day, uh, reach out to me and, and tell me that that's their shit, you know. And it's crazy because that song was recorded on a tape deck recorder, you know. Like it wasn't no studio. Those that have listened to it know that that shit is raw and rugged, and the sound is very bad quality. But it's not even about the the quality of the of the sound. It's about uh, the the way the 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 story, you know, and and, and the approach to the to the track that, um, you know, like it was the time when I was a youngster and I was on the streets. So my my passion on that song was really me, how I was living at the time. So a lot of youngsters obviously still live that way and, and they, they can feel it, you know what I'm saying? They fuck with it heavy to this day. I'll say you were ahead of your time in a, in a sense, bro, of just like. Appreciate it. In the sense of just, uh, I mean, timeless music, right? A classic, yeah. bro. That's a classic. Yep, that's what, that's yep. your classic, it's, bro. Yeah, that you know? puts you on the map. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't want to say it, you know, out of my mouth. I, I, you know, I let people, you know, judge it for themselves. And and yeah, I mean, like you said, it's timeless. And obviously, the 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 definition of a timeless track is a classic. You know, so I consider it a classic. It's obviously not a a, a mainstream situation. I mean, it's an underground track. And uh, but thanks to what social media became, you know, in the mid two thousands, it was able to continue on, you know, through YouTube and SoundCloud. And now I finally put it on the major streaming uh, platform. So just recently, you know, a few months back. So did you uh, did you run? I'm sorry for cutting you out, bro. But did you cool. did you run that egg, egg? actual same track through like pro pro tools or something like that, and remaster it or anything? Not remastered through a. a uh, 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 Pro Tools or nothing like that because honestly, the only reason I didn't even want to put it on uh, uh, on those uh, uh, um, platforms because uh, uh, obviously it needs to be cleaned up. But I didn't want to clean it up too much because people would always tell me like that. That's I don't like that. I want it the way it is. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not about we wanting it to be. Yeah, don't get me wrong. People used to be like, 
I want to bump it in my fucking in my car with my sounds, but that shit's gonna rip up my motherfucking my bass. You know what I'm saying? Because it sounds so fucked up when you try to play it out loud off of YouTube and shit like that, right? You but hear the traffic outside, yeah, I mean, the wind blowing, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, toilet flushing in the background, <laughs> exactly. Um, but now, nah, I mean, we just kind of just right there in a little studio we got. We just cleaned it up a little bit, nothing, nothing too crazy, and um, just just enough for the the platform to accept it. Because if it sounds too fucked up, the platform won't even take it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just enough for the platform to be like, sounds good enough, shoot it, you know. <laughs> and then it's on there, man. Spotify and uh, Apple Music, all that stuff. Uh, that's you know? sick, dog. Yeah. That's sick. That's I guess that'd be the definition of a one hit hood wonder. What do they call it? One hit. What do they call it again? Like the. Not, not the one hit wonders. One hit wonder. That's yeah. a one hit hood wonder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, but I got a few other ones too. No, yeah. but no, I'm I'm just saying in the sense, bro. Like that would be the definition of the hood. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, I get what you say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that that's as that's as that's as ghetto as you can get Hell right yeah, there, yeah. right? Hell yeah, that you know, shit. That shit. Pretty much the definition of the '90s through that track right there. The definition of a any youngster at the time, a day in a life. You know what I'm saying? A day in a life through that track. And uh. You know, talk about recording back in the day. That's how most dudes would do it. You know what I mean? They yeah. press record on a tape recorder. You know, you'd have the beat playing on another fucking, uh, you know, whatchamacallit. Yep. Or sometimes you had the double. The double, yeah, the, the double. The double. The, yeah, you, the, yeah. the double up, baby. If you, had the, the, if you had a little bit of extra cash, you buy yourself the bigger boom box, the ghetto blaster. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, 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 you you know, they'd be having the echo sometimes. Some of them used to have the EQing hey. and, and the microphone uh, uh, the microphone plug. Yeah. Um, so, um, did, that, you do it, did you do it like that? Eventually, uh, I did it like that. Um one of my homies. Well, first I I I was just using just a regular tape deck, right? Yeah. With the uh, 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 like you said, with the double tape, you put a uh, 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 the the instrumental tape on one side and then the blank one on the other. Plug the little microphone, boom, and just start recording the shit and just go off, you know. And obviously back then, uh, uh, I couldn't do takes, right? Like I had to rap, and it's a three bar with hooks in between. You, had to wrap it all the way across. You gotta knock it all the way out, yeah, baby. Yeah, you gotta knock it all the way out. So like Blue yeah. Minivan, all those old tracks, I did them one take, all of them. You know what I'm saying? So uh, a lot of people, how you said earlier that um, I was ahead of my time and I, I was a teenager. I was 15, you know what I'm saying? Like, so just to think, I mean, at the time I didn't think of it as anything like that. But now that I think back, I was like, fuck, like to be like a 15 year old, 16 year old rapping like that with so much, you know, so much uh, uh, passion, you know, for the streets, and so much, uh, so much to say. Vocabulary. I mean, obviously, my vocabulary wasn't big, but it was enough to, to where, like, it, it, it just sounds like, like a homie just getting it in, you know, and, and just fucking, just, just fucking, just trying to, you know, put his hood on the map through the music, but still, you can hear the passion that a motherfucker was really out there living that in order to come, come that way back then, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're speaking of vocabulary. I mean, you were just, it was good enough, brother, for you to get your point across. Yep. Your passion, for people to understand, you know, where you're coming from, right? Exactly, yeah. You know, put your thought all together on a track. And um, so you, uh, speaking of, we, I was saying ghetto earlier, you uh, ghetto boy, South Central. Yeah. What is that, 27th Street or something 27, like that? 27, yeah, Maple Avenue. Yep. Okay, okay, yeah. No bottoms, pretty much where down, downtown ends. Yeah. On like Washington Boulevard. Yeah. And then the low bottom start, which is the South Central, the east side of South Central. And low bottoms is kind of like a new term now, right? The I mean, we've always have we've you guys always, always said yeah, low bottoms? everybody in South Central from the low bottoms have always n like known to say low bottoms to each other. Like when like let's say we go to jail, whatever, and uh that's how we look for each other, right? Like low bottoms, oh yeah, oh low bottoms, the, the homie from, oh you got a homie from the low bottoms. Even since when I went to jail, when, when we were since we were kids, there's always been a term out there for us in that section. Yeah, you know, uh, um, but it did get a little bit more popular, you know, more recent, you know, where where now everybody knows it. Before it was just an inner, uh, inner circle thing, just people from the low bottoms. Okay. Would would look for each other that way, right? Okay. You from the, uh, you because you can say South Central, that doesn't mean we were. Right there, right? Because South Central runs all the way to the hundreds. Yeah. And we're in the twenties. All the way up to Compton, right? Yeah. So so yeah. you know, like when we Watts, look for Compton, yeah. yeah, when we look for, for our core section in South Central, you know, that was always the term, low hmm. bottoms, you know? For sure, for sure. Yeah, so I had one of my homies, 
I ain't gonna say who, who, bro, but uh, he was he was talking about the low bottoms of Highland Park, and I was just like, bro, like uh, we ain't never said it like that. He created some some new new term out there. Well, you know, yeah, yeah. But it is, I guess, it is I like guess, a certain section, the lower section, maybe. Well, yeah, no, it's and, and it's, but it's not a term that we've ever used. But I get as I get it as time progresses into the future, people start borrowing each other's yeah. Term, oh, yeah. terminology right of course yeah i see that all day long yeah yeah <laughs> but when i heard him say he like yeah i'm from the low bottoms of the highland park i was like <laughs> i was like dog where the fuck's that at homie <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, there, siri <laughs> uh, yeah yeah do you is it did it make it to siri already is, that, is it on the urban dictionary already urban dictionary nah, but they they got a bottoms in inglewood like they in inglewood they have an area a section that they call the bottoms not the low bottom they call it the bottoms so uh, there's there's times I heard people say I'm oh, from the bottoms, and then when they say their hood, they're talking about Inglewood. So they do also have a section they call the bottoms. Not too familiar with where exactly, but I know for sure that they there's some hoods that call call their their section the bottoms over there in Inglewood. So I was talking to you earlier about when we were I was me and my girl we're in South Central looking for a crib and shit. Yeah. So I was in the I was in the low bottoms of South Central too, <laughs> and I was uh. On the high, is it a high top? I mean, I don't know. Don't make me, <laughs> the upper. The upper, the upper. Uh, the upper, I was going. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's pretty much like the, the south side of South Central. You okay, know? Yeah, okay. Yeah, pretty much, but, yeah. but the But the low bottoms of South Central, bro, that shit fucking ghetto as fuck, homie. Yeah, yeah. That shit grimy, dog, yeah. to this day. It hasn't changed, now. It ain't changed. It hasn't changed. I just cut through that bitch the other day, dog. You think, but, you, you think you entered the 90s when you go through the 100%, dog. It's so, <laughs> it's so crazy, bro. Uh it's so crazy that, yeah, absolutely, bro, like that. And when I was in South Central looking for a crib, you know, sometimes I see the neighbors, so I talk to the neighbors, you know. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that have moved out of South Central, and now they're in San Bernardino, yeah, yeah. they're in Lancaster, Palmdale, exactly, you yeah. know. But uh, the neighbors were like, man, it's, it's nice now. Yeah. You should have been here in the 90s, you know. And <laughs> of course, right? You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. But um, That's even, even the nice now was is still like, you know, it's still South Central, bro. Yep, yep. You know what I mean? Yeah, it but is. when I was in the low bottoms of South Central, one thing that I didn't like about it, well, I found a couple of houses, bro, but I was just like, damn. I was, oh, this is this neighborhood I see on all. You know, you read the yeah, walls, yeah, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was just like, I don't know, right here, dog. This might be a little too much right here. Because yeah. I had direction of South Central from some of the homies on the, like, you know, the mid South Central, higher South Central. Yeah. Um, but when I got down there, dog, and, but what I didn't like is it's gridlock, bro. Yeah. Dude, during fucking traffic, bro, yeah, yeah. everybody cutting through that low bottom part of South Central, yeah, bro. It's the way it's the way around. It's like the it's the way around out of Fig Figueroa, Maine, because all those streets are everyone's going back home at after work, right? So all yeah. those streets are yeah, that it's all bad. What's that street that cuts over to Vernon, bro? Um, uh, fuck, is a one San Pedro. It no. might be San Pedro, yeah. bro. Cuts across the train tracks. Vernon, bro. I mean, but I, that's one thing, though. I was like, fuck, I'm trying to stay in the city. But even trying to stay in the city, like, that little section, man, it's just, it's gridlock. Because, like, you, you said, or maybe I said, or both of us said, that during traffic times, people jump off the freeway and said, oh, fuck it, I'm going to take the yeah, streets. Yeah. <laughs> and then they jump on the streets, bro. Yeah. And, you know, you're stuck in mad traffic. Yeah. But anyway, so, ghetto boys, bro. You know what I mean? Um, all Throughout the years of me doing time, yeah. I've always... I always remember a homie from Ghetto Boys right yeah, there, bro, because yeah. they always got to, you know, blast it up with the ghetto on the chest, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, and always cool homies, for, but for some reason, for the life of me right now, I couldn't name a homie right now, but I'm sure if we've seen each other, yeah, yeah. out of all the homies, would be like, oh, shit, what's up, fool? Yeah. Oh, bah, bah, bah. You know how that goes, dog. Yeah, yeah. You know? I'm like that, too. Like, I ran into so many, you know, like, homies throughout the years, but um, as time progressed, I mean, I, you know, like, I mean, I start meeting new people, and, and the names just start going back in the memory bank start going back and back until you know uh, if you run into them again and you be like that's right you know like like but yeah yeah my memory's like that you know like i mean we're getting older already so you know the memory is not an hour all the way how it used to be you know and 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 you know going through what we went through like jail or or now meeting so many people like 
you know, it's hard to kind of keep up on all the names and shit, you know? Well, shit, all the drugs that I've done, bro, <laughs> you know what I mean? PCP, methamphetamine, Ooh, crack PCP. cocaine, you know what I mean? The list is deep, you know what I mean? I think what it does, dog, is it, I got a little early form of dementia. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because I, I can't even remember some of my baby mama's names, you know what I mean? I'll just be like, what the fuck's your name? You know what I mean? She's like, motherfucker, I got three kids with you. I'm like, well. <laughs> yeah, nah, yeah, yeah. If you did all that, for sure, there's going to be, you know what I'm saying, some some type of uh, some memory issues right there. <laughs> there's going to be some bad yeah, shit. Yeah, uh, yeah, because, yeah. I I'm mean, horrible I got, at names, dog. Uh, yeah, me too. I'm, I'm embarrassed. I'm so horrible with it that I, I'm embarrassed of it at yeah. this point in my life, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? I really got to have to have bonded with you for a bit in order for the name to stick. If yeah. it was just a real quick, hey, what's up? What's yeah. Up? I'm not going to remember, you know what I'm saying? I'll remember your face, but it's just the names that... But that's just me, though. I mean, it's just, my, you know, like my, my brain, for some reason... If like I said, like I said, like if I don't like repeat your name a couple of times during the conversation, then it's hard for me to for it to stick. I don't know why, but hundred yeah, percent, yeah. like a re retention, right? Yep, re yep. The information that we retain, yep, yep. and then there's some fucking aliens around here, bro. They just remember every oh, little yeah. fucking thing, <laughs> yep. and they'll be like, "Look, remember this, that, pop, 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 pop," and I'm like, "This yeah. breaking down detail," and I'm like, "Damn, homie. Like, yeah, And then yeah. after a minute, bro, I'm just like, "Oh yeah, I remember that shit, <laughs> dog. Oh, that's right. What's up, fool? You know what I mean?" Uh, and that's just me being embarrassed again of yep, not being yep. able to remember something yeah. that this dude remembers from detail yeah, to yeah. detail. Hell, it dog. happens to me all the time, man. And, um, and there's times where I do, I'm like, damn, like I remember, but I just don't, can't, I don't, I'll be like, from here, they're like, no, from here, from this place, that place, I know. And then finally, like the last, the last choice, oh, that's the one, you know, like, but hey, it happens, man. But it's cool. I mean, hey, I met a lot of good people down, down the line that I have ran into again recently. And, uh, uh, um, it's good to, to know that, um, you know, to see people, you know, make it out of, what we was going through, you know, since kids, you know, like uh, to see people. Because at the end of the day, man, if you was around in the 90s, you know, even, you know, early 2000s to mid 2000s, um, man, you you a survivor, you know what I'm saying? Because it was it was vicious, you know what I'm saying? As opposed to now, it's still crazy. But back then was, um, it was uh, it, it was another time, man. It was another time. Blood sport. Blood sport, yup, yup, vicious, man. Like, like, literally, I mean, I can walk, down every corner every inch of my neighborhood and it all has a story you know like it all there's been blood spilled throughout the whole thing you know like and it's just it's crazy to think that um you know like uh we went through that and we still here to this day you know like like and no no it's just yeah it's it's, it's wild to think it to think that um that that I went through that and uh, we right here and then survived we, it. yeah and then and not only just survived it but you know trying to do Flourish. something good you know do something good with with the experiences that we had you know that's important bro yeah i mean they say the hard-headed never learn uh, some of us don't bro but at the yep. same time we we have to you know push it forward of these experience we learned in a positive way somehow some yep. way you know yeah whatever it might be you know um, let's get in your story, bro. Yeah. How about that, dog? Yep. I think we should. It. I think we need to get in your story. I think this story is long overdue, right here on Hoodstocks, man. Yeah, yeah. That's what they was telling me. <laughs> and I appreciate you coming on, brother, because you are uh, the start of a new chapter in Hoodstocks, brother. That's right, man. And I, it's, uh, uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here for this uh, new start. You know what I'm saying? Because. Uh, uh, yeah, we we're here to work with each other and yeah, meet each other halfway, you know, with with what we can bring to the table, you know. Absolutely, bro. You know what I mean? You know, I brought the table, and all you got to do is bring yourself, baby. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah I'm we, right here, we, I'm right here. That's right, baby. I appreciate you. Um, how far back can we go, brother? Well, with me, as far as a uh, 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 as far as my memory goes, you know, what I'm saying like like uh, uh, like I said, we're getting older, so my memory only go so far now but um i mean born and raised south central la low bottoms uh the same house to to the till recently you know like uh 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 gang infested area for sure since since a child you know uh, uh but no lie i mean grew up a good kid in the beginning right like just a normal kid running around doing what kids do uh but I did have brothers, older brothers, two older brothers that um, 
you know, um, were already in their tweens, going into their teens. And um, they were, um, you know, already starting to roam the streets, you know, and, and see what's going on out there, you know, being intrigued by by what what's going on out there, you know, like, you know, pretty much what who became the homies later, right, and who became the hood later. Uh, and um, me as a kid, you know, um, I, I, I was watching all this. I was seeing them and, I, you know, like, I couldn't wait to get old enough to go out there with them and uh, and kind of roam the streets, you know, do what they were doing. Because uh, it seemed fun, right? Like, like they were just youngsters. They weren't. And at the time, it, it wasn't as, as crazy as what the gang warfare became in that section, you know. Um, it, was, it just seemed fun, you know, like just seeing them running around and, uh, you know, uh, going into the little house parties and just being little knuckleheads youngsters and shit, you know, and, and I couldn't go, but I remember thinking like, uh, damn, man, I can't wait to be old enough to, to, to tag along. Right. Uh, uh, but, um, yeah, so I just be, you know, just doing my own thing, you know what I'm saying? Into what kids are into at, at the house until, you know, the time came where my bros felt like, all right, you know, come with us, you know, like, like, Two older brothers. Tag along, you said? yeah. Two older brothers. How how much older? Uh, I'd say like five, like six, seven years. Okay. Six, seven years, so, not too major, but. But but still a, a significant significant at the time, yeah. Age difference, yeah. At the, at time. the time in regards to like, you know, like you, teenage and yeah. Now I'm just being a little ass kid, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, and, and plus, you because know, because by the time they're 18 years old, you're like 11 years yeah, old. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You yeah, know, so. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, I mean. Nowadays, I see people, youngsters that, well, I don't even want to say youngsters because they're not really youngsters, but they start doing what we were doing at 12, 13. They're doing it like in their 20s, right? Just beginning. Yeah. But back then, yeah, you 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 run in the streets already at 12, 13, and you already, you know, got your Cortez on. You're already like trying to look the part, you know, and, uh, yeah. uh, and uh, just by looking the part, you're pretty much a, a part, yeah. You know, if 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 back then there was no such thing as, you know, all due respect, there was no age limit to who gets shot out there. Mm -mm. You know, because I got homies that died at 16, you know, 17, 15, and it was not a shocker. You know, what I'm saying it was just a, uh, it was just what it was. You know, you gang member, you gang banging, and that's the consequences. Nowadays, you know, someone that age is like, oh, like that. He's too, he was too young, you know. Like, nah. Back then, it was nah. That's we were all that age, you know. So, it wasn't a shocker. It was just, you know, it was just a, uh, it was just what it was, you know. So, do you think that uh, back in that era that we're talking about, you know, I mean, you think about it. I'm thinking about it right now, and I'm gonna tell you what I'm thinking about. What I'm thinking about is, in that era, <sighs> South Central, Low Bottoms, bro. We're talking early '90s type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, man. And um, I mean, what is the what is the percentage of kids that don't that make it out of there and don't get involved in the gang, bro? I mean, how hard is it not to be a part of a gang? It know? was extremely hard. Yeah. Right. Because I, I mean, my. I put it as an example, like I, I was a good kid, you know what I'm saying? I I was the type that ever, when people seen me already involved in that, they, they were they were surprised. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm the example of of anybody, anybody can fall into that, you know, at in those times. Uh it was a it was a new thing in our section. Obviously there's older more established who's that been around for since the 50s 60s right that they are in that area yeah but as far as like my neighborhood and other neighborhoods that that flourished out of that um they just started in the 80s you know what i'm saying they're like my hood is an 80s hood you know like that started in the mid 80s yeah so um and the, by the 90s we weren't even a decade in when all this started going down you know so it, it it was new to us you know and like i was saying when we were kids running around we weren't expecting we didn't know what was coming yeah. you know we didn't know what was coming we just thought it was just gonna be out there just no knuckleheads you know just running around but you know come you know 90 
it was a wrap, you know, like it it um, it became full blown. And that really puts the pressure on being uh, having a neighborhood, especially like South Central, right? Yeah. You know the 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 fucking mecca of gang banging. I, I'll probably say that's safe to say South Central, East Los Angeles. You yep, know, yep. um, to be a new neighborhood, bro. You know, in yeah. the jungle, right? Yep. Um, that you know, you gotta. It's it's risky, right? Like the dudes getting into ghetto boys back then. Yeah, you probably had to be uh, made a certain way, so yeah. to speak, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Because you're going you're going up against probably some of the the giants, the bigs. Yeah, yeah. You know, in South you, Central, yeah, right? You were, you were, yeah. All all those little hoods were, had to at some point deal with the 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 bigger the bigger uh, established neighborhoods. Yep, yep. They've been around forever. Yep, because they want either they want you to be a part or they want to get rid of you. Hundred percent. So. At this point, any hood that 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 is still around in in South Central, or well, at least I can speak for the low bottoms, they they went through some shit to be established. You yeah, know? a lot of them didn't make it. A lot of hoods did just disappear because uh, they 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 didn't. You know, it was too much. You know, it was too much. And, and like they always say, you know, there there's a hood in every other block in South Central. Now it's a little different. Now hoods are. Sh- little bit more stretched out but because a lot of hoods disappeared so they didn't make it through yeah the, so the, the hoods times. got bigger <laughs> uh, the, the some of the hoods just took over more blocks yeah so now you know the smaller hoods that used to be small now they you know they got yeah, more territory now because of the hoods that didn't make it you know yeah. yeah it's so interesting in the sense of just like like gangs right i mean it's basically a, a neighborhood group of individuals a club right a yeah. boys club on yeah. every single block YMCA, whatever you want to call it, where young young guys, young homies, little dudes, little fools can have uh, feel like they belong to. You know what I mean? Because maybe some can't afford. Excuse me, little league. You know? Yeah, yeah. Maybe some people can't afford sports. You know? And like you said earlier, you, when you before you you jumped off the porch with your big bros, yeah. right? Before you able to. I mean, you've seen all the excitement. Yep, yep. And that was the excitement. Yep. You know that was that was the that was that was what was in style. Yeah. That shit was cool as fuck. That shit was fly, right? Um, Cortez fools hanging on the uh, block yeah. like shit, homie. Uh, those were the idols, hair bro. Hair to the back, hair net. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, that. Yep. I mean, those were the role models on these streets. Yep, yep. These, these are the role models. They you were. Know? They were. And it's not the and it, you know it, it is what it is. But anyways, the point I'm trying to make is. So there's there's a gang in in Laverne, you know, yeah. and Laverne is a very, very nice neighborhood, bro. Yeah. But there, and shout out to the homies from Laverne. But you know, I was I was driving through the other day, and I was like, this is crazy that there is a neighborhood right here, you yeah. know, because it's such a a nice area, yeah, you know. I say that but, to myself all the time. But but you know what? This is what it is. So this is me making trying to make sense of like why would we have to have a gang in such a nice neighborhood? Yeah. But it gives certain individuals a certain demographic you know a sense of belonging yeah you know they may not fit in with the you know maybe the varsity football team or you know this that and the other you know it gives them a sense of belonging you know it's that it's the outcast of the neighborhoods right yeah. um they would potentially get in the gang like that yeah. but when you go into you know like say a south central low bottom you know it's it's not the outcast, it's the in cast, right? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. bro, you you want to be hang with the cool dudes right here? Yeah, you want to be from the turf, but out there, maybe I mean I don't know, maybe I'm thinking about it too hard, and I mean no disrespect by my thought, thinking out loud on it, but it's just at the end of the day, every neighborhood has a gang, which yeah, is yeah. a group of guys that hang out on the streets, and they needed a sense of belonging to yeah. something, you know. Yeah, yeah. For whatever reason, family, yeah. you know, and and you can't cross cross boundaries. Even though that group of kids might not even be looking for trouble, but once you wander off, like let's go to the the mall, let's go to the theater, let's go to over here real quick, yeah. you're gonna run into the next block. Yeah, the next <laughs> bunch of uh, knuckleheads, and and yeah. that's how it was. that's that's how it was in South Central in, in my section, at least for the. The hoods that started in the 80s, just the way you 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 painted it, it was just like that. And as soon as that group of kids decided to go to downtown to to go look at some movies back then when they had the movie theaters in downtown, there's a hood over there and boom, they clash. Or they want to go to 
uh, uh, over here to uh, uh, anywhere. I mean, you pretty much in, in South Central, you can't leave your your blocks uh, because you gonna run into some some trouble, some beef. Yeah. yeah. So when you do leave, I remember like being being with the homies and and and, and back then when we would actually hang out on the sidewalks and in the corner stores and 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 in front of the laundry mats and all that we would be like we'll decide to let's go to let's go eat at this place it's not our neighborhood someone yeah. else's neighborhood but we ain't nobody saying nah let's not go over there like let's go right but we know already that the potential and uh nine times out of ten uh you're gonna run into somebody and uh, and uh, a lot of times uh you might have not had beef with with that crowd, but the beef's gonna start that night, you know. You know what it is, bro. Is at the end of the day, we can't get away from history, which is tribes. It's tribal, yeah, bro. Yeah. To this day, it's tribal. Gangs yeah, is yeah. tribal, bro. That's that's a, just, way, a good way to explain it. Just like back in the day, I mean, and you you don't even gotta talk about Mexico. You can talk about anywhere else. You can talk about anywhere, the, yeah. Europe. You can talk about anywhere. There was tribes, bro. There was tribes, and there were certain areas where there were certain sections of individuals. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they beef with the next section. Yeah. You know, or maybe some of them tried to, you know, they had fallen out. Sometimes they were good. Maybe they traded fucking, you know, they traded fucking wheat, corn, uh, cows. I mean, goats. I don't know, you know. But it's going to be forever tribal, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be forever tribal. Yeah, and a lot of people wouldn't, wouldn't want to, like, uh, uh, compare, let's say, like, like how you say, compare to tribes or compare to the, same the military because okay. they, they fight over yeah. whatever they fight about. But I do compare it in a way, all due respect, I know it's a whole different thing, yeah. but um, we're, we're built to be little soldiers for what we believe in, and yeah. that's our blocks, you know? A lot of people say, oh, you guys fighting for something don't belong to you. We get all that. Yeah. We get, we, we ain't dumb. Like, we get that it's it's... It's it's senseless, but when you're in it, you ain't it to win it. Like you 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 gotta commit yourself. That's just the way it is. Just gotta, the same as the military is the same as that you when you go you're gonna you gotta commit yourself or are you gonna get X'd out, you know? Well you gotta protect your territory because yeah. your territory is your home. Yeah. It's your stomping grounds. It's where you gotta go outside and get gas or you gotta go to the store or whatever, bro. Yeah. Now if you weak, you know what I mean, then the other side's gonna come take over. Exactly. Yeah. And who knows? You they don't may, want that. They, yeah. yeah, they may not show. They, they, you know, nobody stands for disrespect. Because yeah. at some point you've lost so many <coughs> homies for that cause, that that um you definitely definitely not gonna want to, you know uh uh uh, uh <coughs> let go me. of that cause. You know. Sorry. You sue me, don't. Yeah. yeah. That's all good. Uh, yeah, you're not you you gonna fight for that for that cause. You know, you don't want your homies' names to go in vain or or their deaths to go in vain. You know, like you. You're gonna, you're gonna gain this this uh, a loyalty, you know, to those blocks and and like I said, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, it's senseless, but you can't tell a youngster that he ain't gonna listen, you know, he's gonna he gonna ride it through. I mean, obviously, there's people that don't don't make it, but the ones that have that are still standing to this day, um, they've been through some shit, you know, and and. Uh, you sit down and have a talk with them, and you gonna see. They're not gonna show it because you gotta maintain, you know, you gotta maintain a, a a way to represent yourself. But um, you talk to him, and and, and you gonna know that you know his brain scarred up. You know. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, I always think about different ways of just like how do you, uh, you know, how do you prevent death on the streets, you know what I mean? Uh, maybe that we can, you know, and it's, it's sometimes it's hard to come back from just a long history with maybe another block of a lot of blood blood spilled, right? Um, but in this era that we're living in, you know, it's an era of information. It's an era of, you know, just evolution of everybody, you know? Yeah. Like, motherfuckers are smart nowadays, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, like, and we're smart because of this thing right here, right? Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. You know, we're smart because of this. So, with that said, maybe college, we should yeah. maybe we should find smarter ways to 
to beef with each other, you know? Maybe we should have certain sections of combat sports, you know, uh, yeah. and have it organized, bro. And this is yeah. this might sound silly to some cats, but I do think about this stuff, you know yeah. what I mean? You know, put more boxing gyms, put more MMA gyms in the neighborhood, bro. Yeah. I mean, you go to Mexico, bro, and, they, and uh, Dana White talks about it all the time, and he says there's boxing rings in the fucking parks. Damn. I mean, why don't we have that out here in the in the yeah. South Central parks and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. And well, I think I think if if it does, if they went if and they have sure done it and people do approach it, but you know, and 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 it's gonna be kids that love that type of sport and that are looking for the the sport, the athletic side of it, yeah. you know. But to really see like like gang members like like wanting to do that, yeah, it's kind of like. A little far fetched, you know. I yeah, mean, I know you don't do want to lose that. Yeah, you know what I mean, because if bad. you lose that, yeah, you get, it's gonna be hard to go home to that. Yeah, they you gonna want to like get I, it, since you know you can't get, get, get it. back. <laughs> yeah, you can't get it physically, so you are gonna try to. If I can't beat you, I'm gonna cheat you. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think the mentality. I think it's even worse now than do before. people deserve a fair one? Uh, do certain individuals deserve a fair one? I mean, in in the sense of 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 what it should be. Um, yeah, like like I mean that's. It's fucked up that that um some a lot of people um, you might have ran into somebody that that they didn't get along with yeah. and it could have been dealt with a fair one but you know they just got killed they got smoked you know and that's usually got a lot to do with drugs involved in it don't yeah you think? yeah sometimes you know because for you to do I mean honestly man like like if if you're a human man and, and for you to just just be able to kill to, somebody yeah yeah just on, on the snap of a finger, then yeah, some, some wrong, some, <laughs> some definitely like not all there, right? Yeah. Uh, because at some point, at least you want to uh, feel it out and see it like, hey, well, is it gonna be just a physical thing? Because I'm with it. But if if your whole instinct is just to kill, yeah, then then <laughs> yeah, that that's you know that that's that that thought is a uh, yeah, it's pretty wild, right? Well, a lot of a lot of cats. A lot of homies are, you know, homies that rap and, you know, want to label themselves a killer, dog. I mean, me yeah. personally, bro, I've been through some shit in my life. I've survived some shit in my life. Um, but I'm not a killer, bro. Like, at heart, I don't want to kill nobody, bro. Yeah, yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I don't wake up in the morning, bro, after a good night of rest and be like, you know, fuck, who am I going to kill today? <laughs> even even when I was active, you feel me? Yeah, yeah. Or You know, I'm, I'm still active, bro, but active in the yeah, sense yeah, of running the you streets. Yeah, you know I what I mean? You. Um, I never said, well, you know what I mean? Cause I'm not a killer. Like I wasn't, I'm a good guy. I'm a, I was a, you know, I was a troubled kid, you know, going through some things like a lot of us have been bro. But you know, I was, you know, I got a good heart though. You feel me? Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. and as I get older, I grow into a, even a more like greater heart, bro. Going through yeah. things and being through things and seeing just the injustice happen to certain cats and they can be our own homeboys, bro. Yeah. They, they didn't make it past 15, 14, oh, yeah. 13, you know what I mean? And you think about where the dude could have been at right now and you and then you think about his family, bro. Think about his family, dog. Damn, his family's still suffering, bro, because they think about what their mijo could have been, you know what I mean? Yeah. At, the, at the ripe age of, you know what I mean? I'm 47 years old, 47 years old. Where would he be at now, yeah. you know? Well, it... it I mean, me when I was a youngster as well. Don't get it wrong. Like, not I know not everybody is is like quick to 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 you know to do that type of shit. Because I have been cornered before, you know, as a youngster by you know some other dude from a different hood, you know, with a gun. Well, you corner in a pit bull, bro. He gonna bite you, yeah. right? But but in in that sense, like uh, uh, pretty much caught lacking, and you know, uh, dude just pretty much is like. For like, like spared your life no just yeah just said go you know and and that guy allowed me to be here today how you saying you know what i'm saying shout to that dude bro yeah shout to that dude though yeah. straight up though you know what i mean so so it, it, there are people that that have a conscience you know what i'm saying yeah that um you know he might have seen his, himself in you in me yeah. Because I, I I didn't I was just I was ready to go like like I, he asked me who, who where I was from I was in the wrong area and I I told him you know and, and don't get me wrong seconds before I told him I told myself it's just a rap yeah you ready to it's catch a rap him. you know it's a yeah. rap and uh, luckily the homie just was like probably gave me my props without saying it you know yeah. 
It yeah. wasn't. It wasn't your time to go, brother. And yeah. Thank and thank God for that. Are you a religious person? Uh, not like to the full extent, but I have my beliefs. You know. Well, when you go to jail, do you pray? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So do I, bro. Yeah. That's the only time God gets a wheel off from me. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. He like here this for here this for no. I was I said this in the in a podcast uh, recently, but uh, I mean. I always reach out to God when I'm in hard times. It's like reaching out to a family member, you know what I mean? A loving mother, a loving father. Yeah. You know, you reach out to your creator, you know? Yeah. But uh, moving forward in your story, brother. Yeah. Um, you get off the porch, right? Running with the big bros. Yeah. You know? Living that life now on the, on the you know, low bottoms of South Central. Yeah, yeah. How's that life, bro? Um, was it as exciting as it was watching it from, you know what I mean? On the porch, and I'm using the porch as just yeah, my yeah, own yeah. little terminology. No, no, you know I, mean? I know, I know what you mean. Uh, yeah. uh, it was in the beginning, you know. It was fun. Uh, 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 while it was fun, you know, um, while it was just that, uh, you know, running around in the neighborhood and uh, um, seeing my brother. Because at the at the at the time, I couldn't really do anything because I was still young. You know, I was just kind of just hanging out, watching, yeah. uh, uh, picking up on game, you know, and seeing what what my brothers and the homies were doing, you know, and um, they pretty much like my my hood was known to they was hustlers, you know. They was they was back then money I mean, makers. Yeah, and all the all the the things you said you used to intake, we had they had it, yeah. you know, all the way to the PCP and to yeah. all that. Like my neighborhood was known for that. So they were known for balling. Yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, so the obviously my older homies were the ones doing the balling. The little homies was doing the curve serving. Yeah. So. Uh, that was, you know, uh, that was what it was in the beginning, and obviously the seeing the the, the homies fighting on the street because uh, late eighties, it was still not a lot of gun violence in my section uh, because uh, my first homie that got killed by gun violence was in nineteen ninety, mm. so um, I know. A lot of hoods that been established way before that and be like, damn, like ninety, like we we've been going to war since the seventies. Yeah. But you, you gotta understand my neighborhood started in the eighties, so it didn't get until ninety was when it when it crossed the line. When it got real. Yep, you know, when it crossed the line, when yeah. it was just getting too much, you know, it was just too much beefing going on. 100%. These little the, yeah, these little how you explained earlier, these these little crews, these little, you know, a gang of fools from different Corners was there was just so much fighting going on amongst each other that at some point, you know, you got that knucklehead that you know is going. He yeah. says, "I want to take it a step further." And next level. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna be strapped. And um, yeah, that that's what it was. So from from when we started messing around when, as kids in the late '80s, fun all the way through, right? Just being kids running around. But once '90 came and and that happened, changed. Yeah, it changed everything, you know? Yeah. It became what it still is to this day. Uh, uh, you know, gang warfare, you know, violent gang warfare, uh, weapon, with weaponry and shit, you know? So, um, you know, one thing about, and I don't know, I'm kind of just like pivoting from what you're talking about. Yeah. But I was thinking about the landscape. You know, you're talking about the warfare, the landscape. Bro, low bottoms of South Central got fucking nice houses, bro. I yeah. know they busted up and stuff, <laughs> but they're big houses. Yeah, they were once a beautiful, beautiful big home. Big know? homes. They got Victorians right there. Yeah, you got nice houses, but they're just yeah. now they're they're busted, broken down into different apartments now yeah, yeah. and shit. Yeah, but it's, it's, but once upon a time ago, that area was made yeah. to be like nice, right? Yeah, the low bottoms actually has a a different terminology in in the actual map. It's called the Historic South Central. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, Historic South Central. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. So if you search that up, it's going to show the, the East Side Low Bottoms because Historic South Central at one point was, uh, it was the spot for, you know. The elites. The elite. Yeah, 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 yeah. They had a lot of stuff going on over there. A lot of, uh, and even spilling over to West Adams. Yeah. The other side of the 110? Yeah, where the, uh, where the Harpies are. Okay. That also is historic it's called historic historic uh west adams i believe as yeah, well no, because it, yeah. that whole strip which is east and west adams low bottoms and west adams was um they pretty much that's where all the movie stars lived 
and they would go and and, 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 and and you know do what they do over here on the east. They pretty much they lived on the west and came and fucked around on the east because they had uh well they had like they just had bars like these these they just whatever it was that they had back then where they 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 had a night out. That's where it was on Central Avenue, you know, on Adams, all yeah. that, you know, uh, uh, back in the days, you know, in the little rascal days, the fucking, you know, like they used to live right there. Like if you check the history of where people lived back in the days, the people like movie stars from back in the days, they lived in that area. Wow. Yeah, they lived it, in that it, area. It, it, it makes sense. So once again, going back to when Lucky was looking for a house in South Central, bro. It's crazy to hear that you say you was looking for a home in South Central, you know, because that's kind of the opposite of what we were trying to, we trying to get out of there. And well, you, you, it's crazy to well, hear you I say that. Well, I couldn't afford to, so if you can't afford to live, I, it's hard to live in East LA or Northeast Los Angeles. Yeah. I'm from Northeast Los Angeles yeah. and uh, it's, I can't afford to live in my hood, bro, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, East Los is just as expensive now, bro. Yeah. You know, so the only places that five years ago, six years ago, when I was looking for a crib, that I can still be affordable without getting pushed out to fucking, fucking San Bernardino or fucking Palmdale, Lancaster, yeah. was South Central and Compton, bro. Because <laughs> it was still like, all right, you can still buy a crib, a nice crib for like, yeah. for like, 300 and I was looking at Watts too, bro. Yeah. Uh, 300, 400, you could still buy a house like for around that price and a nice yeah. house. Yeah. You know, it was better bang for your buck. Yeah. You just had to like, you had to figure out like, okay, how am I gonna do it? If I'm living in this area, yeah. this potentially be, can be uh, become gentrified soon. Yeah. But anyways, so when I was on the low bottoms of South Central, I was like, fuck, these fucking houses are nice as shit. But they were all just worn down, bro. Yeah. A lot of them were worn down. Like they hadn't been taken, once upon a time, like you said, it was like probably like the Hollywood area type of shit. Yeah. The elites were living there because the houses are just beautiful. They're big, yeah. but they haven't been taken care of a lot of nah, them. Nah. It's, it's like that to this day, right? Yeah, yeah, but uh, USC is, is uh, the, the college. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're starting to take over, and um, they, they, they've been plotting for decades, and they're starting to... They buying, start, buying houses or something? Yeah, they're starting to spill over. You know, it was always a, a taboo... Uh, uh, topic for them to not pretend like the east side low bombs don't exist because Figueroa and the Harbor Freeway splits the USC campus from us. Yeah. Which is just down the street. Yeah. You know, but I knew it all along that little by little they were going to try to start sneaking their way over, you know, and, 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 uh, and you, and you, are you talking in regards to like professionals? Moving into the area now? No, students. You know, students. students. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Not heavily, but they're they're starting. They're starting. You're starting to see it well, little by little. Well, once you start seeing the the, the Starbucks popping up, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? The Starbucks start popping up, and then uh, uh, you know, commuter, uh, a new train line yeah, going yeah. through the. I mean, anyways. Yeah, but but don't get it wrong either though. Um, they're only going so far because once you like, let's say like like in my neighborhood, like yeah, like it's it's still. What it was in the nine, like like I told you, what you drive through the you, you think you just entered a time machine to the nineties, <laughs> dude. Like like I feel that way still when I drive through there. I feel like I feel like I'm 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 having a deja vu, you know, like like fuck, like like damn, yeah. like I'm still right here, you know. I don't live in my neighborhood, but I'm saying when I go through there, yeah, like I I just you just feel it, you know, because you it ain't a thing of just live there, you know, like. We spilled blood there. We lost a lot of friends there. Uh, it's just it's so much, you know, so many hard times. Good times, don't get me wrong, a lot of good times, but uh, mainly hard times, you know. And uh, it, it, you feel it, dude. Like you feel, you just feel it. You know what I'm saying? If you're really from that life and you've really been around, you know, what happened out there, you drive through there and you, you can feel it, dude. Like you can feel it in your soul, man. Like, 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 you know, like a lot of people died in these streets, you know, a lot of people. Um, yeah, you can feel that shit. Man. I don't even know how to explain it, but it's like that. I feel it. I mean, I feel it. Yeah, yeah. You keep on saying you can feel it. You can feel it. And everything you were saying, I feel it in the sense of like there's certain areas that you can you can drive through and you can feel a presence. Yeah, yeah you know, of something dark. Mm -hmm. Like this area right here, it's not safe. Yeah, yeah. There's been a lot of fucking trauma. There's been a lot of death. And it's probably like uh, something that we can uh, compare it to would be like, 
a haunted house, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. You know, like you ever walk into a crib and be like, Hell damn, yeah. I mean, this, 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 this <laughs> got a weird aura to it. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. It's got a weird vibration to it. And they make movies about this yeah. shit because that's real shit. Yeah. But now we're talking about a certain section, not yeah. just a house, but a certain section that you drive into. Yeah. And there's one, there's one area that I want to say, but I'm not going to say the name of the area, but if that I know on the east side, bro, that's known for, you know what I mean? A lot of bodies, you know what I mean? I mean, all the there's yeah, there's yeah. a lot of different areas without with that within the city, bro. But I know exactly what you're talking about, brother. Yeah, yeah, and it might be a personal sixth sense, sixth sense because yeah. I've been with a person and I express my feeling like I I I, I don't want to be right here. Like I, I don't I don't like the vibe. Or oh, I, you I'm always gotta you trust your yeah, gut, bro. Of course I do. And yeah. the next person be like, Ah, you tripping? You tripping? I'm like, Hell nah. Yeah. Let, nah, I'm cool. Ooh, you know, I'm but, the same way, dog. Yeah, yeah. If I pull up. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, all right. Always got to go with your gut. Yeah. Always got to go with your gut, dog. You know what I mean? Your gut will never steer you yeah. wrong. Yeah, there's a reason why, you know, we still here. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's God in us, I believe. Yeah, yeah. If you, I mean, I know you said, you, you know, you only believe so much with God. But I say that we all have a little bit of God in us. And, a, and God is a conscious. God is a yeah. sixth sense. Yeah, yeah. You know? And if you feel something, that's God telling you, hey, dummy. yeah. You know, I'm referring to myself. I'm yeah. not saying you, dummy. I'm yeah. a dummy. I yeah. mean, you know. Um, but I think you, that person. Get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. Whoever does have those, those that sense, you're tapped in to, to, you're tapped into that inner self where you can have that. There's people that are just numb to that shit because they, they just not, they haven't been in a situation where they have to sit down to, to understand that, you know, like to really understand what's going on inside yourself you know that there really is something in you that guides you you know and obviously through a, a higher power right but it's in there and but you really have to had tapped in there to know it's in there it's not just gonna be telling you if you don't want to listen you know yeah no 100 percent 100 percent yeah so that's pretty much um that's how it was. That's how it went for us. Once the '90s started, it, it it all started for us too, you know. And um, from that point on, it just was nonstop, you know. Uh, when it came to to the streets, um, committed, you know, to the fullest. Didn't think I would see uh, 18 years old, you know. And when I turned 18, I didn't think I was gonna be 21, you know, and and, and so on and so forth, right? And uh, but within that time i've always been uh i've always loved music like regardless of what was going on all that fucking warfare and and all that craziness in, in, on the streets i always gave music the time of day you know i always have these things on my in my ears even on the street what was some of your shit like back in the day uh, you fuck with? well as a kid you know, as soon as gangster rap came through with the uh, NWA, and uh, which was like late eighties and uh, uh, early nineties, like with DJ Quick and all that stuff, uh, West Coast, you know, uh, that's what that was my shit. But prior to 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 gangster rap hitting the scene, like as little kids or as youngsters in the house, we would bump everything. Like we'll bump East Coast rap, like LL Cool J, EPMD. Yeah. Like before it was split into East West, it was just music. You know, we would have our, our little box of cassettes, the pirateria tapes that you buy uh, on the street for two bucks, you know, the, the fucking pir the, the piracy fucking cassettes. Because <laughs> we couldn't afford the original that yeah. cost 10 bucks, you know. I mean, you were South Central too, bro. Hey. So, you know what I mean? You got all the, you know I mean, options to get the pirate shit. Yeah, no, they was all over the place in every yeah. corner, you know. 100%. Uh, so we were buying them and we was listening to that shit and, and, uh, you know, thanks to my bros, obviously I was just a little kid, but they had their shoe boxes full of cassettes, boom, all variety. I'm talking about R and B, oldies, East Coast, West Coast, uh, everything. You know. So both your brothers are from your hood. Yeah. And so explain to me the the personalities of them and compared to you. Um. 
I guess the personality was more of the the era. No, the personalities of the individuals of your brothers. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you got one bro that's a hothead. You got one bro that's like you know what I mean. And then you yeah. got you. Like the, explain the dynamics between you and your yeah. bros. Well, pretty much like you said, one was more of a hothead that ended up at seventeen years old doing a, a juvenile life. Yeah. For that first nineties. Incident. Yeah. Okay. He, you know, the retaliation. Yes, sir. You know, um, way we we started with that, with with dealing with the streets and the system. Mm. You know. Yeah. Having to deal with because he went. That was the introduction to your family with the system. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right away though, you know what I'm saying? Because you know we were kids. Yeah. He was 16, I believe. You know, uh, I'm cool right now. Thank you. Uh, so th there you have that, you know, and then so he went away right away, and now I'm left with my other brother, and my other brother, um, he's till this day from those times has always been uh, into music and heavily into music and also uh, recording footage, mm. you know. Uh, back then he was doing that. He was already doing that back then, late '80s, you know, mid '80s. Yeah, the, with the big old fucking thing over <laughs> his shoulder, you know? And what got him into doing that? That's interesting. Uh, just because of the music or what? No, no, it wasn't even music related. It was just uh, a recording family, you know, family. You know, my, my dad, you know, bought a, a camera once, you know, because we used to go to Mexico a lot. Yeah. My dad would take us to Mexico, so he wanted to record memories. And my brother, you know, he new technology. Hey, well, not new technology, but to us, a new toy, right? Like something that we never thought we would have, you know, like... As kids in South Central, like they bring you a, a brand new camera, and you're like, you want to be the one. Like, yeah, let me, use, let me do it. Let me use it, you know. And, and as much as you use it, you master it. You know, you become good at it. Yeah. And uh, uh, so he was the one always recording everything <laughs> back then. So you got, do you guys still have all that footage to this day? We have not that exact one from the '80s. We it la it lasted many many years, but eventually it just got lost. 100%. But we do have a lot of footage. From the um, from the nineties, uh -huh. as when we were like in the mix and it, you know guy members and shit. Because of your bro or what? Because of my bro. Ah, uh, that's and sick, to bro. To this day, he's still like my personal videographer. You know, for what we're doing now. That's sick, brother. Yeah. That's sick. You know what I want to say? I want to give I want to give a shout out to my my homeboy, uh, my homeboy Dreamer Edward, man. Um, he bro. My, my homeboy Dreamer, bro. You go to that fool's crib, even back in the day, bro. He always had the photo albums of all the pictures. Yeah, like he's at homie, bro. That was us. He's yeah. at homie, bro. Like to this day, you, you, bro. This dude got an archive, homie. The pictures, Polaroids. You know what I mean? All that shit. So there's always a homie that's gonna document it in, in one way or another. My homeboy Dreamer. For some reason, I always had the pictures. To this day, you got all the photo albums. There's a, there's a, probably a few of my homies that got it like that. But um, you know what I kind of want to do, bro? Yeah. I think I want to do two parts on this, bro. Mm -hmm. I think I want to I want to give them something right now. Hell yeah. And we do a part two. What do you think of that? Because you have a lot more of your story to share. Oh yeah, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. <laughs> are we are we are you good with doing a part two? Yeah, hell yeah. Let's do a part two, bro. And the only reason I do this is because we're moving differently right now. And as I'm as I'm talking to you, I'm like, damn, dog, we're not even we're barely scraping the surface right now. What if we give these guys this right now? Because people are complaining about, you know. Certain th certain uh, interviews being too too, what? too long, bro. Yeah, yeah. Because they go to like sometimes we go to like three four hours, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? The minds the mind the the mind span right now is not is is really short. Like like for people's viewing. Yeah, yeah. So I think that, that is actually a good idea. Are you you want to do a part? You want to do a part two in about three weeks? Hell yeah! You down, brother? I'm down, bro. I because I, I want to do it right, dog. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you got a you got a lot of shit, dog. Yeah. And I think right now these motherfuckers are mad right now, bro. I know you motherfuckers are mad. You want the whole story right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, they want something. Like, but hey, what? How, how does Netflix do it, right? Yeah. They do a series. Hundred percent. And, and get you stuck. You can't wait to hear the to see the next one. Well, I'll tell you with my homeboy. A three or four parts on him, bro. Yeah. And as I'm talking to you, I'm just like, bro, we, there's no way we're going to, we got to break this out. Yeah. We got to break this down, bro. You know what I mean? And do it right. 
And I'll take care of you on that too, brother. Yeah, yeah, you know no, what I'm saying? We're good, we're good. I, I, yeah. I'm with it because I understand, I understand your thought process with that, you know, and, and, and you gotta, as you're doing your podcast, you, you gotta brainstorm. Yeah. And you you gotta you gotta make it happen, you know, and you and that's a great idea. You you good with that, bro? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, part one, baby. How can people support you right now, bro? Well, right now, what I'm doing, what I've been doing, uh, is uh, pushing my rap group. That's uh, V O T G, V dot O dot T dot G. It's a rap group that I created uh, with my nephews in 2015. Those that know my story know that uh, I've been rapping since the 90s, uh, doing what we talked about, like just recording cassettes. But um, for some reason, me not knowing at the time, it became a timeless hood classic. Yes, sir. That people still bump to this day. And um, with the fame and legend of that, I was able to, you know, uh, bring my nephews to the, to, to the table and create a rap group Sick. with their stories that they've been living through from you know the 2000s whenever they started doing their thing on the street yes sir mixed with my story and um, VOTG stands for voice of the ghetto so um, our music pretty much um, is what we do you know we, we bring that we bring that we bring uh, pretty much I think uh, voice of the ghetto stands for uh, the voice of everybody in a struggle, everybody that's been through what we've been through, people that are still going, still going through it, people that you know are locked up, homies that have passed away. I believe that our music um, speaks for the voiceless, you know. So that's hence the voice of the ghetto, you know, uh, speaking for those that that been through what we've been through, and and I just wanted to give them a soundtrack. To, to their lifestyle, you know? Absolutely, brother. That that sounds amazing, man. Right. Shout out to shout out to you, man, looking for out for your uncles and just kinda like Appreciate not it. only not only like uh passing the baton, bro, but not leaving the race. Still oh. leading the race. Yep, yep. You know what I mean? And, and take, I'm right there with them too, you know, like exactly. to guide them, you know. Hundred percent, and that's necessary, bro. Yeah, that's necessary, man. And uh, I, I, I salute you for that, brother. Appreciate. Hats it. off to you, dog. You. Hats off to the whole fam, bam. Hats yeah. off to your brother. Everybody, yeah, right here, dog. Trust, hell yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll be back in three weeks. Hell yeah. Let's, Let's do, do it, it, baby. I think that that makes better sense because we'll maximize it, and it'll be maximized for you as well. I'm but, but once again, for people to buy your music and follow you on Instagram and all that stuff. Yeah. Links. Uh. Uh, all platforms, uh, VOTG, search it up, V.O.T.G. Uh, we got a website as well as VOTG1, the, the number one, dot com, where we sell merch and, uh, you know, put stuff out there right there. And uh, on Ghetto Lifers, uh, official page on YouTube, you, that's where all our music videos are, all our behind the scenes, vlogs, um, and just search it up, man, Little Silent. Just type in Little Silent and you're going to know, you're going to see who I am. For those that don't know who I am, you know, uh, and those that are, uh, have been following and supporting, man, appreciate y'all. Those that were telling uh, Lucky to bring me on. Yeah, man. And he heard y'all, man, so I'm right here. Yes, sir. I heard him. I heard him loud and clear. And I thought the same thing you thought, bro. Yeah. You know, when the time comes, we're going to make it happen. Yep, yep. You know, we're going right. to make it happen. So with that said, everybody give it up for Little Silent, baby. Yeah, appreciate it, And y'all. he will be appreciate back. everybody. Homie, be back. Let me pay some bills right here real quick. Silent, give me a quick second. Um, I'll see you guys right here. Let's get it right here. Hey, Peep Game, we are sponsored by Marijuana. All right, makers of Marijuana Beverages. Two sisters, one smokes, the other bakes, and together they make an awesome combination. Check them out on Instagram, at Marijuana's, at Marijuana Foods Co., or visit their website, uh, drinkmj.com. If you have an annuity or structured settlement, Hit up your girl Veronica with Catalina Structure Funding. She can get you your money when you need it most. Catalina Structure Funding is attorney owned and operated. So hit up your girl at 818-319-1581. Breaking news, breaking news. Everybody listen up. Uh, the Fed has just lowered the rates. All right. If you own a home, or now is the time now is the time to revisit the financing. And if you want to buy, revisit the appeal process. Many of our listeners mistakenly believe the only way to buy a home is to have perfect credit, a large down payment, and then proceed to get an bidding war on your favorite home. Uh-uh. This ain't the case right here. The the team at Prime Equity Mortgage has access to off-market inventory and access to 50 plus banks. 
plus their own bank, all right? We have helped thousands of people in, thousands of people in our community to get their home and even help investors find ugly homes to flip. This is how home flippers buy the homes. Call Andrew. This is my dog right here, Andrew, man. I'm just going to take care of you, baby. He helped me get my crib. And his personal number, this is cell number I'm giving him right now. It's 626-825-6565. All right, look for some good quality cannabis. I mean killer quality cannabis. Hip the folks at Killer Kush. They specialize in bringing the, the best quality available from OG to Exotic. They got it all, baby. The final location, go to Instagram at Killer Kush underscore underscore 420. They're going to tell you where to pull up at. Looking for the best criminal defense attorney in the city of Los Angeles. Look no, fair, look no further. Doug Sherrod is our, this is the, the, my criminal defense attorney that I have on retainer, right? Don't play with it. You know what I mean? I got the best criminal defense in this attorney in the city. If I ever need it, or if I never need cribs, I pray, I pray to Jesus I don't need to do that, dog. Because I got kids to take care of, homie. I ain't got no time for that shit, bro. You know what I mean? I've done my time. I committed my crimes. And uh, I'm moving on to bigger and better things, but with this platform sometimes, you know what I mean, you got to have insurance policy, so I have a criminal defense attorney on retainer, best one in the city, kingkonglory.com, kingkonglory.com, that's how you reach them. Orange County, stand up, got a few numbers of lifestyle brands that's dedicated to supporting inspiring individuals who determine to achieve their dreams. We believe that no matter where you come from and what you've been through with hard work and dedication, anything is possible. Please visit gutterphenom.com, gutterphenom.com, gutter. Phenom.com. Use uh, Hoodstars20 to receive 20% off. We're also sponsored by uh, La Conecta. San Antonio, Texas. Stand the fuck up. Hey, shop LaConecta.com. Use Hoodstars to get 20% off. Um, we also sponsored by Baba uh, Stickers. Everyone that does our stickers. The dude that does our stickers. Graphic Joe. Go to Instagram at Graphic Joe underscore. He's going to take care of you on your stickers. And I mean, DM him. Hoodstock sent you, and also we're sponsored by, oh wait, hold on, there you go, right there, dog. Um, Kush Connect, baby. These are my Armenian brothers at a Sun Valley, dog. They're going to deliver it to you, dog. They're going to pull up, you know what I mean? Not the, you know what I mean? They, they got some delivery drivers, dog, that are just little hot, little hot things, dog, you know what I mean? And if you tell them Hoodstock sent you, they're going to put a bunch of extra shit in it, like a rolling tray. Uh, bro, they're going to take care of you big time. And so, if you're uh, in the downtown LA, East Los Angeles, San Fernando Valley, um, they're gonna take care of you, dog. They're gonna pull up, and that's one eight 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 four twenty four Kush. One eight 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 four twenty four Kush. I love you guys, man, and we will see you. And uh, we're gonna get the part two going very soon, dog. Oh, yeah. We are out of here. Love, respect, baby.